Last week we reviewed the Nokia Lumia 620 and if you happen to watch the video review of that, I can sum up the Lumia 520 in 5 simple points. 1. This one has a bigger screen. Number 2. The rear camera doesn't have a flash. Number 3. There is no front camera. Number 4. The screen doesn't support clear black technology. And number 5. This is 30% cheaper. Now, if you haven't watched that video, let's move on. For starters, the build quality of the 520 is quite solid and just like the 620, this one also comes with interchangeable back panel. Once again, you get a lot of color options in the back panel and unlike the 620, the back panels here do not come integrated with a 3.5mm jack, which means you should easily get a lot of third-party panels and also at a lesser cost. The 520 doesn't look as sporty as the 620, but it does look a lot more elegant. However, the opinions in our office were divided as to which one is a better looking phone, so you can take your pick. But what is more important is that the phone is compact and ideal for single-handed usage. The Lumia 520 comes with a 4-inch IPS display and once again the colors are quite vibrant and the picture quite sharp. But this one, since it's a budget offering, doesn't come with the clear black technology, which means the polarization filters are missing on the screen. To counter that, what this phone does is automatically adjust the contrast depending on the ambient lighting. So if you're outside, the contrast will be different from what it would be when you're indoors. As far as the touch sensitivity is concerned, it's absolutely spot on. I would say this is one of the best screens that you would get in this price bracket. Just like the Nokia Lumia 620, this one is also built around the Snapdragon S4 platform with a dual core 1GHz processor, 512MB of RAM and 8GB of internal storage with a micro SD card slot that allows you to expand it further by 64GB. All these numbers do translate into good performance. There's another thing that I would like to mention, we tried running a game on it and it worked fine. Then we minimized the game, tried starting another game which worked fine as well and then we switched between the two which was absolutely seamless. Now that is something unique for a budget phone. As for the camera, this one comes with a 5 megapixel autofocus camera but lacks a flash which means low light photography is almost non-existent on this device. Also, though statistically both phones have a 5 megapixel camera, the picture quality of this camera is not as good as the one that you find on the 620. Having said that, I would like to add that the picture quality is not bad at all, just that it's not in the same league as its elder brother. The camera also supports interesting digital camera lenses such as Cinemagraph and Smart Shoot that you generally associate with the higher end models. The list of connectivity options on this device is pretty standard and there are no notable absentees. You'll find Wi-Fi, 3G, Bluetooth, everything available. And since this is a Windows Phone 8 device, it supports unrestricted Bluetooth file transfer as well. And last but not the least, you have a free voice-guided GPS navigation with offline maps that Nokia's famous for. On the software front, I've already mentioned that it's a Windows Phone 8 device and it comes with a great Microsoft Office integration along with 7GB of SkyDrive space. You also get a free one-year Nokia Music subscription that allows you to download unlimited music for a year for free. So how much would this phone set you back by? The answer is less than 10,000 rupees. Yes, 9,900 to be precise. Which means this is a landmark device because it finally brings the Windows Phone 8 platform below the 10K mark. Last year when Nokia released the entry-level Windows Phone, the Lumia 510, I was utterly disappointed with the device. For me, it was more of a Windows trialware or more like a sampling device than a full-fledged smartphone. But the Lumia 520 is not just a cut but a few cuts above the 510 especially with the addition of expandable memory and much, much better hardware. As far as the application support is concerned for the WP8 platform, it's nowhere in the league of iOS or Android, but it's getting better. The only thing I miss on this phone is a front-facing camera, simply because the Skype integration here is excellent, and without the camera, it just falls off. But even now, the way this device stands, and after having weighed all the pros and cons, we would rate it at 4 out of 5 stars. For more details, log on to techtree.com.